Welcome back guys to another video. Before we dive any deeper, definitely check out the free Discord server. Link is in the description below. There's more than 16,000 members. We're rising every day. It's one of the biggest stock option discords on the Discord platform, so definitely check it out. And it's pretty fun, especially during the mornings. Everyone starts trading. The bell rings at 9.30 and we all just go crazy. So before we even dive any deeper, definitely know Warren Buffett. He's the legendary investor, the guy that pretty much turned literally nothing to everything, having a net worth of $76.2 billion, literally becoming one of the wealthiest people in the world. We should definitely know what he's buying. And these stocks that will be showing you take up like 75% of Berkshire Hathaway which Warren Buffett is CEO of. And this is one of the most successful investors in the world, only investing in companies that generally do really well. And the companies that he pick, they do pretty decent in bad economic times, disasters, and kind of okay in pandemics. So if you check out the number one pick, it's American Express. Now, obviously, Amex isn't really doing so well. It's been down 21% in the past year. While the fintech companies are reaching all-time highs, like PayPal, American Express is still kind of in the dirt. It's one of those stocks that have not recovered back to its all-time high of $135. Traditionally, American Express, vacation stocks, and big bank stocks have all got hit pretty hard and have not reached all-time highs. It's pretty painful. But of course, if you guys feel like tech is a little bit overvalued and you want to find stocks that eventually will go back to the original February price, look no further than American Express. Their business is becoming bigger than ever before. Customer service is honestly phenomenal. I've used multiple different banks and credit cards and I found myself way more attracted to American Express. On top of that, when you use an Amex card, they usually charge the merchants a little bit more than other credit cards like Visa and MasterCard. Therefore, a lot of these merchants stop accepting American Express, but then again, they start accepting it because it turns out people who use American Express, like those gold cards and plaque cards, generally spend more in stores. So this actually makes merchants allow American Express even more nowadays. So this is why you're seeing more and more locations allowing Amex. And guess what? Amex is really raking in the dough. Even though they have less clients, it's great because they make a ton of money from just the annual fee alone. The gold card is $250 a year. The plaque card is over $500 a year. It's expensive. And guess what? They charge the merchants more. There's less customers, but they make a ton of money. And their overall market cap is still pretty nice at $75 billion. Bucks. For American Express, it's more like quality over quantity. If you check out the overall revenue, it's always increasing. And it's always increasing by a lot. Not by like 1% or 2%, but like 5 11 8%. Every single year, there's always growth for American Express. This is a company that you should definitely check out, especially even though we are in a pandemic, a lot of stores right now are starting to shut down, but in the long term, American Express will prevail. Next stock is Apple. I don't really have to say this much, but Apple is by far one of the most stable companies out there. It's already experienced like a 10 to 20% correction from the peak of $134. Now it's at $109, and it's definitely a major buy if it drops below 100 bucks. I don't really think Apple could go down any further, but if it does, definitely watch out and get yourself some shares. Dividends aren't really that impressive at 0.73%, but Apple is doing a lot, especially this year's iPhone 12 Pro and the Pro Max, which has 5G capabilities and will definitely sell extremely well in China, which their 5G infrastructure is better than ever before. The reason why the stock is dropping so much is apparently it turns out China didn't actually buy that many iPhones 2019 and 2020. iPhone sales in Asia have been dropping rapidly. And I feel like one of the biggest reasons why is Apple didn't have 5G, whereas other major smartphones like Oppo, Vivo, Huawei, Xiaomi have 5G already for a couple years. And keep in mind, iPhones are priced at roughly a thousand bucks. The Huawei foldable phone was $2,500 with 5G and it sold out within a few seconds. So yes, I feel like if Apple does have 5G capabilities, they will sell better. And Tim Cook even said because of 5G, they feel like this year's iPhone will sell extremely well. And right now I'm trying to get my hands on the iPhone 12 Pro and it's sold out everywhere and I can't even get it. If I wanna order one right now, it's gonna be coming like super late November and early December 
which is a major bummer. Now, Apple's revenue has always been increasing. Now, obviously, there was this decline in 2018, but overall, the health of the overall company is always going up. They're doing streaming services. They're doing the Apple credit card. They're more of a fintech company now. They're a streaming company. They're like a music company. They're trying to be a health company. It's looking pretty good for the smartphone company. And I really highly recommend Apple. Apple should be a solid staple company for any long-term investor. If your portfolio is a little bit volatile, if it moves too much, put some Apple stock in it. 30, 40% Apple stock. You won't regret it. It will go up in the long run. And next stock that Warren Buffett holds a bunch of is Bank of America. And I'm talking about Warren Buffett is holding a ton of Bank of America. Bank of America lately, if you guys haven't noticed, are expanding a lot of their retail stores. I can't tell you how much, but just in my city alone, I'm witnessing about three Bank of America's retail stores being opened up. And it's kind of crazy. They seem to be going on a frenzy of expansion. Their dividend is 3%, which is higher than the S&P average right now of 1.8%. And so far, the stock isn't really doing so good. If you guys want to find a sector that hasn't fully recovered but will eventually recover, it's the bank stocks. You can't really go wrong with that. And so far, Bank of America is doing pretty well, and people should definitely take note of it and watch out. Bank of America is definitely going to be coming up and doing extremely well, and the dividends pay really good, so why not check it out? The last stock is Coca-Cola. You can't really go wrong with the overall company. It's pretty decent, and you buy Coca-Cola not because of the overall stock growth, though it is really stable. It's one of those stocks that you could go to bed and not really worried about the stock. The dividend yield is 3.39%. Even if there's a pandemic, even if there's an election, even if there's no stimulus, Coca-Cola will always do well. I mean, it's not like we're not going to be drinking Coca-Cola during a recession. I mean, we're still going to be buying this nice, delicious, fizzy drink. And so far, Coca-Cola was about to hit $60. It was kind of overpriced, but now it has popped and it's stabilized around this area. Market cap is $200 billion. And what they sell is just sugary drinks. It's not a complicated business. It's a business that we use on a daily basis. And Coca-Cola has always been slightly increasing, though there were declines in some years, but overall the uptrend is pretty flat and it's a very slow and steady growth up. And there's nothing super innovative about Coca-Cola. This is why Coca-Cola is such a good dividend machine. You buy it, it will always be around 40, 50 bucks and can get dividends 3.39% every year and just snowball that down, down, and down. So, so far, that's about it, guys. These are the four best stocks of Warren Buffett. I honestly like Apple a lot. American Express next, Coca-Cola third, and lastly is Bank of America. It's a good stock, but recently, Bank of America is having extreme troubles trying to get up from $24, but in the long term, all these stocks will do extremely fine, and guess what? A lot of these stocks have pretty decent dividend yields and pretty decent growth, so you buy shares in all four companies, you should be expecting extremely good payouts every quarter. Thanks for watching, and comment below.